Okay, everybody, I would like to introduce Edith de Belleville. And she told me that if I tell you all about her, that she won't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yes, exactly. It, thank you. Uh, we all know that that's a bunch of malarkey. Okay. However, okay, I will tell you one thing about Edith, and then you won't believe me, because she used to be a lawyer. I'm still. You're still a, well, of course, she's still a lawyer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and Edith has several books which are here, and Jolie has a few copies. I highly urge you to buy them because they are hilarious. <laughs> In fact, I made her give me one of the copies, okay, signed, because I wasn't leaving here without one. So unfortunately, you guys are going to have to go online and order them yourselves. <laughs> you have one of the... Two. You have two books, but and one three, only three. one copy of the... No, two in English, three in French. Oh, this is your chance to practice up on your French by reading her French, which I've also read and is pretty hilarious, even in French, okay? <laughs> Edith de Belleville, tell them all about you yourself, yeah, please. Yeah, yes, Okay, thank, thank you. you. Is it okay for the... I let open? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so now you're told I was hila hilarious. <laughs> I guess I have to be funny. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. Yeah, no pressure. I will say, however, that you need to project because to compensate for the noise on the street. So I, 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 I no, or just ah. speak really loudly. I, I don't speak loud. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm here. That's the name of my book. I make a bit of a publicity, Parisian life, uh, that I wrote in English. I'm very proud. And I hire someone to. I'm hired someone, I hired someone to correct the mistakes. Huh? So don't think my book is uh, written as I speak English. A bit, but not so much. May the next uh, slide, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you. Alors, just to, I know, I have to tell you something. The is there are differences between French and American. Many, as you know, you probably live here, you know. One difference, big difference, when someone does a lecture, yeah. you don't, better? You don't talk about yourself when you're French. When you introduce a book, you come to s talk about your book, you don't read about it, and you don't speak too much about yourself because it's not polite. You know, you have to be humble and discreet, and you're not here to hear about my life because my life is not so wonderful. You're here for the book, for literature, for culture, but not for myself. But, oh, as I know a bit, Americans, because I'm a tour guide and I do lecture in English, that's publicity, I know that people who do lecture have to introduce themselves because my friend Lisa, that she's not here, but she will see me, she said, you have to talk about yourself. This is how American, you know, they're interested. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, you're right. I'm right. So I have to <laughs> say a few words, not too much. So, um, Adrienne told you, yes, I'm a lawyer, attorney at law. I don't know the difference, but anyway. So I did study, I'm very proud. <laughs> Sorbonne University. This is my university 18th century building, Place du Panthéon, and I passed the bar. Uh, I had a master degree in labor law, but don't ask me anything because uh, I don't want to, it's for me, I don't want to do law anymore. I'm just a bit. Um, <laughs> I married, a, now it's my private flag. I married a Canadian. That's why you have the Canadian flag, yes. Um, so we were thinking to go to Canada, maybe it was anglophone, and as I could, I could not be a lawyer, so I decided, as Canada is bilingual, to have a license to teach French to Canada. So I have a, a degree French as second language at Burgundy. I put you the Boeuf Bourguignon because uh, Bourgogne, the wine. Uh, and just to brag a bit that you, Canadian, so do you know, or Randy knows, Mordechai Richler? You know, uh, it's my family, family of my husband. You, uh, do you know the other people? No, because yes. most, uh, well, no, voila. <laughs> Only Canadian, uh, Canadian people, yeah. most of Canadian, Randy. Did you know Mordechai yeah. Richler? Yes. Oh, yeah. He's very, very well known in Canada. He won many awards. And he, this is the library in Montreal. He's an uh, anglophone from Montreal, Mordechai Richler. So it's family of my husband. The library is named after him? Bec the Excuse library me. is yes, named yes, after him? Yes, the library Mordecai Richler. So it's the equivalent, if you don't know, Philip Roth yes. yeah. is the Canadian, you know, Jewish, sarcastic, and uh, voila. So, 
Voilà, voilà. So that's why. But I divorce because, well, I don't want to tell you why you're not in <laughs> <laughs> uh, But anyway, just to brag a bit that, you know, that now there are two famous writers, Richler and myself. <laughs> uh, and I was born, so my name de Belleville, uh, it's a uh, nom de plume, as you say in, in English. I uh, was born because I was <laughs> born in Belleville. And nom de plume is not English. I, I, oh, you really? You say nom de plume, it's in you, English, you use yeah, yeah. Nom, but nom de plume is French. I didn't know this. No, I'm joking. I did! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I was the nom de plume, my not my real name. I um, I was born to de Belleville because I was born and living in Belleville, just in front where Edith Piaf was born. Oh. Yes, because uh, and so at 50 years old, uh, I wanted to change to do something else. So I decided I wanted to be a tour guide. But in France, you need a license to be a tour guide, so to be able to guide in a Le Louvre or Versailles. So I went back at university, evening class, not easy at all. Two years and I had my license. After I'm a young licensed tour guide. Old lawyer, but young licensed tour guide. So <laughs> I had my license and I gave a visit in uh, Le Louvre, in Versailles, uh, voilà, everywhere. What else? Yes, um, I teach, I do also Jewish uh, works in uh, Paris for a Jewish uh, center because I'm Jewish. My real name, I, t I tell you my real name, you will know why I cannot choose as a Parisian tour guide. It's Schmuckler. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't How sound do you very spell French. S Z M U K K K K L E R Z. Two Z one K. Like Schmuckler? Schmuckler. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to keep Belleville, okay? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Voilà, merci. <laughs> That's why I say I have to change my name. Uh, so, and I teach the, the Jewish heritage of Paris at university, Gustave Eiffel, which is Marne la Vallée, for the license to guide because a uh, few Jewish guides we do the Jewish Paris we realize that uh, it's very popular and uh, I, well, I, I'm recorded, I shouldn't say this. But anyway, <laughs> to train a bit the people who are not Jewish the, the, and who want to do the Jewish uh, Paris. Uh, to know more about the Jewish uh, heritage in Paris. So voila, that's it. And I'm very proud because my grandfather, who was Jew from Poland, he wa I'm, I'm very happy to be here because he was working au Carreau du Temple, which is not just right there. Just there. So I'm, I know this neighborhood very well because it's the neighborhood of my grandfathers who arrived in Paris in the Look in at the that 20s. old photo of the Carreau du Temple. It's a blur because it's old. Uh, it's old picture. Yeah, yeah I know, it's great. Voila, that's it. That's Who is it. the Rachel over there on the left? Rachel, ah, thank you. <laughs> you don't know, Rachel, she's a very famous actress, Jewish, from 19th century. She's very well known because uh, many, um, uh, Alfred de Musset wrote about her and she was really uh, an icon of the romantic and she was Jewish. She's I do, in fact, I do uh, visit about the Jewish diva of Paris. That's my next book, by the way. <laughs> voilà, that's it. Next Enough for me. Yeah, okay, next I one. Yeah, next one. But I wouldn't be a Jewish mother if I didn't speak about my son. <laughs> <laughs> and my son, he would be very angry to know that I speak about him. But I have to, to brag a bit because I'm very proud of my son. I have two. But the elder one is studying at Sciences Po. Alors, if you don't know Sciences Po, you know, so, he's so brilliant, oh, my son, I'm not humble. <laughs> Normally, you, had, you know you had a writing test. You have 10 percent, they took 12 percent of people who want. All the French president, most of, did study at Sciences Po. Uh, except Sarkozy, who was only a lawyer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, it's very, you know, alors, it's if you want to compare. So, you had a writing test before, and then oral. And my son was so brilliant that he didn't do the writing test. They saw his marks and said directly, yes, it's very, yes, he's the, uh, sometimes he talks to me, I don't understand. So, <laughs> <laughs> just to tell you, the first one, what is it, the first one? You American. H, with the H. Harvard. 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 Political science, Harvard is the first, of course, American. First is Harvard. Second is, Oxford, Oxford, and third, it's Sciences Po. And you see, this is very prestigious, Harvard. Huh? It's, you think yeah. it's serious. Oxford, heritage, long story. And look, the French, 
they're on strike. <laughs> and, uh, I it was so French that it's written, we are against selection, Macron, uh, l'école est bloquée, you know, that's uh, so, you know that France is the first country we have top one of the demonstration in, uh, in, uh, in the world. Huh? <laughs> 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 so I thought it was funny to see it very different. So this is my son. He's a bit blur, but he's a good looking. With, you know, who is the man? Yeah. François Hollande. Oh, oh oui. Yeah. Yeah, of course, the pre oh French la la. president. Yeah. Well, oh la la. Uh. Ex, ex, but we have to call him President Stier. That's And this is a nice, uh, a bit prestigious, a rich science book. Okay, enough to talk about my son. Now let's talk about something more interesting. Alors, I wanted to do, not to speak always about um, my book and myself, so I had the idea to talk about Café of Paris, because in my book, café are very important, and for Parisian, for French, café, you know, we are very important. So I will talk about café to change a bit, like, uh, no, the truth is not this. The truth is I didn't have time, and I recycle a uh, lecture I did. <laughs> I tell you because we know each other, so I recycle, <laughs> but it's still interesting. <laughs> Alors, the oldest café, one of the oldest, you know, 1686, Le Procop, where we say that Benjamin Franklin wrote the, um, the treaty between France and the uh, Insurgé, because that was the name of the American, not the American. So, have you been there? Mm. Yes? Mm. It's, uh, alors, the food is so-so, but the hot chocolate is good, and it's a nice, nice cafe, yes. Voilà, so that's one of the oldest cafés made by an Italian, huh? because that's the Italian who brought the, the café in Paris. Voilà, the next one, I'm very quick. Alors, the customers, Enlightenment century, very important, you know, that the Rousseau, Montesquieu, Voltaire. Alors, Nuno Rousseau was uh, from Geneva, very important philosopher who influenced the French Revolution. He wrote the Contrat Social to talk about democracy. What is interesting about Enlightenment century that you really have, you know, the, with American Revolution, French Revolution, the same concept, the same ideas. So it's interesting to what you read about the, f the French philosophers, you have the same, you know, the, the most important concept, of course, is freedom. Of course, it's freedom. And um, alors Montesquieu is very important because it's him who had this idea that you have in the States. It comes from Montesquieu, who was a lawyer, to be the separation of the three powers, you know? Judicial, executive, and legislation, uh, three different. You vote the law, you apply the law, you make the law, you know, that's the, the that's separation. It comes from uh, Montesquieu. Voilà, that's why the, the smart minute of the lecture. Now and the Voltaire? Alors Voltaire, it's for the religious tolerance. You know, because uh, laïcité, voilà, laïcité, and to to protest, to protect the Protestants, uh, the Jews. Alors, you know, when when I do the Jewish uh, heritage, we, it's interesting because I always have a argument, not fight, with the uh, <laughs> American Jewish people because they say, well, Napoleon was super great with Jewish people. That's no. the idea. Uh, and in fact, no, you're true. right. No, no, it was not wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's him who made the, what we have now, the, uh, the consistoire and the rules, the, the how the Jews, you know, how to obey. But in fact, Louis XVI did, before the French Revolution, they did the tolerance to protect the Protestant and the Jewish people, you know, before the French Revolution. And it's during the French Revolution, but it was uh, not easy to do, uh, to give the protection to the Jews. But Voltaire uh, is well known Laïcité, that's it. Voilà. <coughs> Does everyone know what laïcité is? When uh, you Sep don't talk about religion. Separation of church and yes. state. Yes, which is in France 1905. Very important, 1905. That's why, for example, when I took the oath, yeah. oath yeah. Uh, I didn't do on the Bible, but on the civil code. Mm -hmm. And the jury... For and your the to be a lawyer. When yeah, you to be a lawyer, you know, you swear to the, I'm be a lawyer, blah, 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 uh, not blah, 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 <laughs> very nice uh, <laughs> words. Is um, that legally? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it's on the civil code. And the jury, they swear on the civil code, and not the Bible, because of the... Separation. Voilà, voilà, voilà. The, the next one, uh, please. Voilà, so you have the address, Benjamin Franklin, a nice place. Napoleon, too, who went there. Ça, c'est le Procop, voilà. Next. Next one, please. Yes, you know where the chocolate comes from. Who took it? Who had the chocolate? Who, who ordered a chocolate? Nobody? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Yael took a hot chocolate. 
So did you know, Yael, that it comes from Mexico? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, you know, you're smart. Uh, <laughs> so you know it's from the thanks to the conquistador, the Spanish, who took the chocolate. What is interesting that it's the, the nun and the Spanish court, the queen and the king, I mean, who had the idea to put honey and cinnamon in the chocolate. Because you know, in Mexico, it was salted, like the mole you have in, uh, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it arrived in France, I think it's the next uh, slide, Thanks to the mother of uh, Louis XIV, who was Spanish and Autriche, she married Louis XIII. So when she arrived in Versailles, in a suitcase, Vuitton suitcase, she had the chocolate. <laughs> and the chocolate, um, people only drank. You eat the chocolate only in during the 19th century with the Industrial Revolution. But until 19th century, you only drink the hot ch the chocolate. You put cinnamon, honey, you see here you have elegant women drinking chocolate. It's a way to show you have money. It's a social way to see because the price of a cup of chocolate is one week of uh, my salary. Maybe you half a week of your salary, but <laughs> one week because I'm not well paid. Uh, and um, alors, Bayonne is very, you know, it's in Basque country. And if you go in Bayonne, there is a um, museum of chocolate, Musée du Chocolat. Why? because uh, you know the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492 mm -hmm. as they were speaking Spanish and they were they became the chocolate dealers of Europe so they left Spain they stay in the French side of the Basque country Bayonne and they became the the chocolate dealer the Sephardic uh, the the Jews uh, Sephardic from Spain they became why well, you don't that agree? is bright no I was ah. that's just news to me <laughs> yeah 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 you know you I know you know the word the you know the I have to tell you the Sephardic the Jews are the Jews from North Africa Spain Turkey yeah? and the other side the people who the Jews you have in the United States Ashkenaz the majority well, most of them come from most the Eastern, Eastern Europe Eastern Europe so Sephardic are the Jews from North of Africa Istanbul, uh, Bulgaria, and, uh, and we Spain. call them Spain, and that's why we call them Sephardic, because uh, in Hebrew, Sephardia, it's Spain, mm -hmm. and they all came from Spain. Voilà, that's it, about chocolate, enough. Okay, enough, enough chocolate? Enough chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Never no, again enough chocolate, chocolate. No, you see? <laughs> voilà, that's Louis XV. Uh, thanks Louis XV, we have the breakfast, huh? because before, for example, Louis XIV, he was a... Uh, for breakfast, he was taking, uh, he was a uh, dick, dick, the, um, <coughs> when you put the, the bread in the, Dumping. thank dip. you. Dip. dip, bread, That's dunk. It. dunk. Dunk He was dunking his uh, bread in wine. Wine? Yes, yes, Louis XIV, that was the, and it's Louis XV who popularized the, the, the thing, the concept to have something sweet, like a brioche, or something sweet, a cake, with chocolate or coffee. So, and here you see Madame du Barry, a favorite. Mm -hmm. You know that they're doing a movie, uh, a French woman, she will play Madame du Barry, and guess who will be Louis XV? I had a big argument on Facebook, I have only argument <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> who will play Louis XV? Johnny Depp. Oh. Johnny Depp? Yeah, well, I think it's really No, voila, no, thank you. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Your name? Anna, thank you. Yeah, yes, yes. I had a big argument. <laughs> he's a good actor. He's, I'm sure he's a good actor, but he speaks French, okay, but he has an American accent. Oh. He should play Benjamin Franklin in 60, you know, with the 16, but not, uh, <laughs> well, anyway, so that's my point of view. I'm happy to see you share my point of view. <laughs> so the next one, please. Alors, what is it? Uh, this is something, the Canadian lady. I'm speaking. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm very bossy. Uh, the what is important, I took in my book, uh, it's uh, something very French, it's art of conversation. So it's something that you have, le café, the literary café, and uh, I even tell it's a way of sedu seduce people. So something very important, the art of conversation, comes from 18th century. Uh, the literary salon. Alors, I try to put painting you can see not far from him in the Louvre. So the first one you see, it's le déjeuner, or um, it would be the breakfast. François Boucher having chocolate. And here is a uh, picnic chic, you know, in uh, near Versailles of people from 18th century. So the concept is eating and talking and, you know, nice food and nice conversation. Something very uh, French, I think. Well, I don't know if you agree. 
important to have something to say. Next time you will have chocolate, you will have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> voilà. Alors, and cafe politics, also many, for example, you know the Palais Royal? Mm -hmm. You know. So, you know, it was a place who did belong to the, the brother of Louis XIV. So the police, the uh, Orléans family, as it was a royal uh, place, it was forbidden to the police. So what do you do when you don't have the police? Gambling, it was Las Vegas, prostitution, <laughs> it, and uh, kids were, children were not allowed, it, and politics. So the idea of the French Revolution were in the literary salon, ruled by women in Paris, but also a lot in cafe. It was really the cradle of a revolution, eh, the cafe. So the, unfortunately, uh, most of cafe disappeared, except Le Régent, near Le Louvre, Le Régent, because it was the region, the nephew of Louis XIV, who was who ruled the country when Louis XIV died, and when Louis XV was too young to be the king. So if you go in, there are many tourists, but if you go inside, you will see portraits of Le Régent and all the people. Ah, I have to talk about Netflix. <laughs> this, if, do you have Netflix? Yeah. So have you seen this, Lady J? Lady J, it's excellent, it's a brilliant movie, really brilliant. Um, it's based on a um, book written by uh, Diderot. Alors Diderot is one of the philosophers from the Enlightenment century. Le, um, it's a sh in the book it's a short passage, but it's brilliant. I don't tell you the story because I don't want to spoil the story, but it's brilliant. The costumes look like 18th century paintings. Everything is beautiful. The way they speak is very 18th century. You know, it's very. It's I really, really like this movie. Who yes. It's is it a music? is it a French or British production or an American production? No, it's French. It's a French production. Only French. It's, it's in French. Uh, honoré, honoré the, the but director. It's in, and it's in French. Yes, but you have the. I checked the English subtitle. Yes. <laughs> That the Canadians don't need because the all Canadians speak perfectly French, so you don't <laughs> need the. <laughs> no, but uh, no, you you in French with the English subtitle. I mean, me, I really it, it's very well done. If you know or if you don't know 18th century and you want to be in the mood of 18th century and you see the lib libertine, libertine, how do you say libertin? How do you say in English? Libertine. 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 That's a story. What happened when a libertine is in love? You know, libertines were very cynical. Huh? They were thinking women are, it's like the war. They have to take a woman to pretend they're in love when they're not, to fake feelings, to just have sex with a woman. But what happened when a man like this really loves someone? So it's very interesting. Mm. Voilà. That's it. The next one, please. Okay. Next one. Thank you. Alors, just the cafe which disappeared in the 19th century. It's the cafe where also the artistic exchange. Alors, again, a cafe which disappeared, but very important if you're interested in impressionism. Uh, cafe um, Gerbois was really the place where the impressionists were talking about their theory. You know that impressionists, they were rebels. Huh? They didn't follow the rules. Uh, they, didn't, they were rejected from the um, School of Fine Arts. So the places where they could exchange the theory and talking where well, the Café Gerbois, and here it's the draw by uh, Manet. Alors Manet is not impressionist, but he was the model, the icon of the impressionist, because Manet was a, a bit older. I talk about Manet in my book, first chapter. Voilà, so I try to do. <laughs> voilà, so and here it, you see the Café, tel que l'on connu les impressionnistes. This is it, so interesting place. It still exists? No, it disappeared. Gone? No, gone, gone, voilà, gone, unfortunately. Mm. Voilà. And here you see Parisian woman at cafe. Interesting that cafe, the woman couldn't go at cafe in the, this is in my uh, <laughs> book in French. Uh, 19th century, you know, when you were going in a cafe alone, you were a prostitute. Uh, it was a way, you know, you were a prostitute. You have to wait. Ritz, you know the Ritz Hotel? It seemed who had the idea to make a very nice place for women from um, nobility or bourgeoisie who wanted to go to leave the home. Because in fact, the concept of 19th century in France is that a woman, you stay at home, you stay with the children, the, s the private place are for women and the public place for men. So if a woman wanted to go out, it was not possible, it was in purpose. So little by little, you know, places like Ritz Hotel 
was allowed to women. So something uh, for the girl. Voilà. The next one, thank you. Alors, that's uh, something interesting, I think. Drinking alcohol. Oh, not, not nice. So here you know <laughs> it's the famous painting uh, Orsay Museum, the girl that you see, the she's not very happy, eh? that uh, drinking too much absinthe. Absinthe was the alcohol for working class. Uh, that's Bero. Alors Jean Béraud, it's a painter I like very much. He's a painter from Paris. And if you go to the Carnaval Museum, mm -hmm. you have full uh, wall full of paintings of Jean Béraud. I really, he's not impressionist, but he, he paints in very well Paris and Parisian people, especially women. So how do you know she's a prostitute? Would you know she's a prostitute? No, woman? but she's not drinking, is she? It looks like ice cream. Voilà, so for <laughs> you, it's a woman having ice cream <laughs> in a nice place, okay? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but not in 19th century. It's she's a prostitute. So how do we know? She's alone. She's drinking. The name is La Prune. Huh? La Prune is a plum. It's a alcohol. She's drinking uh. plum alcohol. La Prune is at the French class. La Prune is a plum, not mm -hmm. plum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plum, mm -hmm. plum, yeah. voilà. Yeah. So she's drinking, and she's a oh, woman she's smoking. smoking in public, only prostitutes. Plus she has makeup. The way she is, she's waiting for the client. Uh, you see how it's set so That's not a woman having an ice cream, but a prostitute <laughs> looking for the client. <laughs> <laughs> or dreaming about the next holidays in <laughs> Bali. No. <laughs> for the clients. You see, it was extremely subtle. That's the... And here, so how do you know? She was an actress, in fact. You know, she's a prostitute. You see a bit of her ankles, you know, that's a... And this one, of course, a prostitute. The way she is, something very erotic, 19th century, ankles. Can you imagine that in Paris, we don't realize, you know, now when uh, people, when we complain, think that first you were not allowed to wear trousers. You had to go to the police station to ask authorization to wear trousers. And you could wear trousers only for two reasons. Because you were riding horses or riding a bicycle or an authorization of your doctor. Imagine each morning. Otherwise, you could be in custody at the police station. So at the exhibition at the Carnaval right now about Parisian women okay, feminism, there's a whole part of it about the bloomer, bloomer. that was created so that they could ride bikes. And it bloomer, uh -huh. thanks to Mrs. Bloom Bloomer, that she was American. Huh? You know, she's a great, great feminist. I always say, and I say in my book, that uh, thanks to American sisters, we are, you know, uh, the <laughs> French women are white. Many things come from American women. Uh, the bloomer, for example, it's from America. No, I mean. So, yes, yeah, so interesting that. So what I was saying, when you were the woman, you walk in the street, so you have a l very, very long dress, you don't show your ankles, and you have men who, a man is following you and is waiting that you take your skirt like this, you know, to pass the street, just to see your ankles. Imagine, yes, <laughs> men were following <laughs> you, would follow you in the street. Can, yeah, it's, uh, it they was are quite so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was heavy. <laughs> Heavy to, to be on the public space for women. We don't realize now. We complain because harassment, which is not good. But if you think before, to be alone in the street, it, you were, uh, you know, uh, something to catch for the men. Huh? So, voilà. And then the next one, please. Thank you. Voilà. Et belle époque. Alors, belle époque, it's 1880 to 1914. The most famous Café de la Paix. Not the cheapest, but the famous where... Donc, uh, Victor Hugo, Zola, Oscar Wilde, you know, Oscar Wilde died in Paris, mm. and Marcel Proust, the famous uh, writer, Jewish writer. Uh, well, he, he didn't... He is pr he is didn't Proust buried at the Père Lachaise? Yes, 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 yes. He didn't consider himself... You know, Proust is one, say, the best French writer of 20th century. He didn't consider himself a Jewish, he, he thought he was Catholic. His father was Catholic, the mother Jewish. But when you read, there was an exhibition at the Jewish Museum about him, <laughs> and you realize there are many, many Jewish uh, 
thinks, you know, in, 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 his, in his book and uh, the way he did behave, not he behaved, but he was involved, you know, with the Dreyfus affair, which was an affair not a very, who did shake the Republic. So, voila, and here is the inside. Very nice toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Something important. <laughs> Toilets. When you uh, walk in Paris. In my book, I write. I wrote about it because a chapter. The, for me, the nicest toilets of Paris are the toilets of a Ritz hotel. It's a golden swan yeah. when you go to the. Yeah. Really nice. Voila, <laughs> voila, voila. Next one, yes. Alors, ah non, Montmartre, hein, of course. Café for artists. So, who leave the artist Picasso? Who's the best friend commit suicide because of a French woman? <coughs> And uh, voila, Dan Utrio and Suzanne Valadon, you know, the Bohemian artist. Voila, I don't have many things to say about Montmartre. <laughs> That's the next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moving on. This is the cafe famous uh, because it's very touristic. I like Montmartre, but it's touristic. So you have plaque, hein? it's written Van Gogh, Pissarro, Degas, Cézanne, Toulouse, Lautrec. They all had the coffee in the place, you see. So it's a. Uh, Voilà, that's the, the, the café, you can see, la bonne franquette. Voilà. Et Montparnasse, I prefer Montparnasse, the Roaring Twenties. Ah, I took the, that's the book cover, Roaring Twenties. That's my favorite time of history. So, the birthplace of modern art, why, you know, Bodigliani, Picasso, Kissling, Kikin Montparnasse, I like very much. Mm. She was the muse, you know, of the artist. And this is where Hemingway met Fitzgerald, you know, in the Dingo Bar in the 14th uh, district, 14e arrondissement. Alors, in Montparnasse, it was funny. May I have the, the next one, please? Thank mm -hmm. you. That, so you see, you have Le Dôme. Yes. Uh, you have the Hemi Hemingway movable feast. Oh, he talks about the, the, the cafe. And if you read the movable feast, there is a chapter at Le Dôme with uh, Passine. Jules Passine was a Jewish painter from Bulgaria. This is what he did. And it has a funny chapter, very funny, very short, that he meets uh, Jules Passine at, uh, and Jules Passine had a um, busy night with two models of him, you know, <laughs> so he tells and everything. It's, uh, and he's very, a bit uh, puritanical Hemingway, so it's a bit, a bit shocking, so what happened. So it's in Le Dôme. Alors, Le Dôme was the place for uh, the people from Germany, Scandinavia, you know, North people, maybe, maybe because you never have a, it's always on shade. And La Rotonde that we saw before was the cafe for the Latin people. So you had the French, Modigliani, the, the Italian, Picasso, Spanish, it was really like a border. And the cafe for American, I think it's the next one. Voilà, select. that's the Café for American, the Select Café. You see it's even written in English. First bar open all night. So you imagine, uh, for the American who escaped from the prohibition, <laughs> drinking. Uh, and if you read, uh, if you have read The Sun Also Rises by Hemingway, there is a chapter where the Lady Brett is on the bar and she's flirting with men and it's in the Select Café. That's why you have Sun also rises cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Voilà. And La Coupole, another Roaring Twenties. That's incredible because you see the floor, nothing has changed. It's, it's kept everything like it used to be. If you go in the bathroom, in the toilet, you will see nothing has changed. And here you see Josephine Baker, that she was inside. And La Coupole, again, huh? Bar America. When it was American bar in the Roaring Twenties, it's always the image of American. Always has been modernity after the Second World War. But more, I would say, in the Roaring Twenties, huh? when you want to be mod, when you wanted to be modern, American. You know, oh, something educated, modern, open-minded. So they put, you know, American. Mm. Bar. Things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think it's globalization now. I think you. So the same everywhere, yeah. So, voilà. Alors, that's, yes, yeah, that Parisian, they prefer coffee than tea, yeah? The French, uh, Parisian, we drink more coffee than tea. In fact, that's the next book I'm writing about Paris cafe. <laughs> so, um, so, to sell tea, you ha it was monopoly, it was the king who gives you authorization because it was extremely expensive. Same for chocolate. 
And one of the oldest drawings is Daman Frère. You see, if you go Place des Vosges, mm. 1692. Huh? So, and you know what? I forgot this. Inverter of perfume tea. I forgot. I fortunately, I'm here to remind my own things because <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. So Daman Frère. My favorite brand is me. I like is a uh, Mariage Frère, not Daman Frère. Mariage Frère. According to me, it's mm. good. Voilà. 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 The next one. Merci. And the 50s. So Existentialist Café Saint Germain des Prés. Café de Flore sur Alice. Apollinaire, you know, Sartre Beauvoir. Um, alors, do I have to tell you what is existentialism? No. No, yes? No, you know, you know what is it, you're not interested. <laughs> no, yes. Well, <laughs> uh, thank you, Janet, yes, thank you. You, you gave the best explanation. You're nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, it's a Swedish, when I did the I do literary walk in Saint Germain, and it was a Swedish woman. She said, can you explain me existentialism in uh, two minutes? <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and That's in English. existential. <laughs> yes. In fact, it comes from Sartre, who was influenced by other philosophers. The concept, you have to think after the Second World War, religion is very important. So the concept is what you do, uh, God doesn't exist. And so, therefore, God doesn't have a plan for you. He won't tell you, for example, Yael, you have to be a, a Russian teacher, you got to have a plan. No, you can do whatever you want. So you are what you do and not, you know what God said, you have to follow your path. This is it. The meaning is your existence defines you. The, it means that, for example, if you want to be, I don't know, a Russian teacher, you can be, even if you don't speak a word of Russian, because you can be, you know, you can do it. It's you can do it, in fact. It's the American, you can do it. That your existence makes yourself. It's very Im interesting, because after uh, Simone de Beauvoir, she said she applied existentialism for women, meaning it's not because you're a woman that you cannot be a painter, that you can be a carpenter. It's stupid, you know. Why? You couldn't be whatever you want because it's a, it's a pre prejudice, préjugé. So you can do. So it's interesting how existentialists apply Simone de Beauvoir. And me, Simone de Beauvoir, she was one of my life coach when I wanted to be a tour guide. <laughs> Most of people told me, you want to be a tour guide, but you're a lawyer. You study so much to be a lawyer. You know, you're more, you know, uh, and now only a tour guide, only a license, you're a tour guide when you study so much. So I said, okay, but I want to change my life. And I thought I could, wouldn't be able because uh, they accept, it was on a um, file and they only accepted people who did study la foreign languages or history. And me, I arrived, lawyer, say, what is it? You know, I mean, I was sure they wouldn't accept me because nothing to do. And thanks to Simone, I call her Simone, she's my good friend. So <laughs> I thought I can do it. So I, I did, I really tried to, um, and it worked, you know? So the meaning is you can do, yeah. no, but really you can do, or if you live in France, if you want to live in France, you can do it. If you want, if you say, oh, but France is too difficult, you can do it. I mean, uh, don't say it. I did. Yes. French culture is so anti-existentialism. <laughs> Alors, uh, this is another I mean, because yeah. if you go through the, the école in France, you're on a track. Exactly. On you a track. have to do one thing. You're not allowed to even think about doing several things. That's it. And that's so anti-existentialism. Yes. It makes no sense. Yes, and it's more <coughs> American are more existentialist, for example, uh, yes. Much more but so. No, no, I agree, but it was more, you not know. Not to mention the French bureaucracy. <laughs> the, 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 I think the concept of Sartre and Beauvoir, it was more political, mm -hmm. meaning even right. if you come from a working class, That's like me, for example, I come from working class, you can become a lawyer, you know. It was more political than the, mm -hmm. um, changing your pa you, you, you job. It was more political. You can, for example, Beauvoir, she was coming from a very Catholic uh, background, uh, and she was the Beauvoir nobility, and she didn't want to be, she said, I don't want to get married, to have children, and s so she changed, you know? So it, I think it was, it's more political, even if I agree with you. <laughs> voilà. Alors, Apollinaire, I have to read. Oh, Alors, wait, okay, wait, I'll go back. Yeah? No, 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 it's okay. Yeah. Uh, this is it, Apollinaire, <coughs> this is him. Something different with the, the books, 
first time I went to the American library, there were two American women, they were invited, they were full of people, and suddenly they start to read their book. This is what you do, right? But you don't do this in France, never ever. I was shocked. I <laughs> said, why does she read the books? She thinks she's Victoria Hugo, or uh, nothing <laughs> the Balzac, or, I mean, uh, oh la la, she's brag, she's very, it's not humble at all. And if I want to read a book, I buy it, or I borrow it, but why I not, I don't care about it. I was, sh but really, I was with an English friend, he said, oh, this is how the Anglos does, you know, I don't have English accent, but he was making fun <laughs> of me. So this is how they do. So this is something that I won't read extract of my book. I know that people but read. we want you to. You want to, but I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But because I think it's, for me, it's a bit ridiculous. Lena, I'm reading your books. So, but on the other way, the American, for me, you're the king of marketing because you created Mark. I, I discovered marketing when I was at 50 years old at the university. I really love marketing. On the other way, you say, okay, but if your book, we will see quickly if you read, if the book is good or not, so we won't buy it. Mm -hmm. So on the marketing way, you see, it's a good <laughs> argument. So I have to read. So I had an idea. I'm not reading, I'm reading an extract, but it's <coughs> not my, it will be Apollinaire poem, <laughs> high level. Okay, that does not count. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because, no, because I talk about Apollinaire. And it's okay. a story, so I think the next slide, it's about a love story. Voilà. C'est le pont Mirabeau, le poème. And it's a poem written by Guillaume, who is a top five, you know, of the French poet. Uh, very, very famous, that we all learn at school, the children. And he was in love with Marie Laurencin, who was a painter. Alors, this is a painting of uh, Coco Chanel by Marie Laurencin. You can uh -huh. see Orangerie Museum. And this is Apollinaire uh, with Marie Laurencin. But I'm too uh, <laughs> humble, so I won't read. I ask my, my friend from uh, Shona. You. <laughs> you. You. <laughs> because there. no, I have to introduce <laughs> to Shona, my good American oh. friend, yeah. That I talk about <laughs> in my book. Yeah, she was a dancer in Broadway. She's a little oh no, professional. No, no. I wasn't you know, Broadway. I thought if I had to ask someone, I have to ask someone who is professional to impress you. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and it, the problem, the words I cannot pronounce in English. No. <laughs> That's the real story, but I'll pretend. So, she will read you the Le Pont Mirabeau in English. So, I just tell... just to hear? Just here, just here. Okay. Just tell you the, the meaning. He's in love, and she dumped him, Marie Laurencin, <laughs> and he <laughs> say, love is like the water, nothing happens. It's a very melancholic and sad. So, let's listen to Shona. Uh -huh. so I'm a little bit... Um, <laughs> no, 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 she's good. Under the Mirabeau Bridge flows the Seine, and lovers must then be reminded, joy came always after pain. The night is a clock chiming, the days go by, not I. With face to face and hand to hand, while under the bridges of embrace expire, eternal tired tidal eyes. The night is a clock chiming. The days go by, not I. Love elapses like the river. Love goes by. Poor life is indolent. An expectation always violent. The night is a clock chiming. The days go by, but not I. The days and equally the weeks elapse. The past remains the past. Love remains lost. Under Mirabeau Bridge, the river slips away. The night is a clock chiming. The days go by, not I. Merci, Shona. Thank you. Merci. Merci Shona. <laughs> <laughs> voilà, so you see, it's a good, nice poem. Eh? Merci, Shona. Thanks a lot. So that's one of the poems I like of Mirabeau. And the next one, please. Voilà. Anne de Mago, of course, very well known. So now I, that's the woman I like. Who is she? She's Nui Hemingway, after the Second World War. Janet Flanner. Oh. Ah, yeah. Janet Flanner, wow. who worked on the New Yorker. Uh, can you imagine the biography, one biography I've read about her was written by a French. So if a French writes about an American, it means she's very important. Huh? <laughs> so she's great. I mean, I really like her, Janet Flanner. I mean, she's a great journalist, a great woman, and uh, voilà, and you have Picasso and this. Voilà, and the next one, that is the... Ah, alors, coffee and literature and chocolate. Coffee and chocolate, when we think about coffee and chocolate, 
In France, we think about Madame de Sévigné, that I like very much. She wrote letters. I always say when you're a writer, she's the only writer who didn't want to be published because she wrote letters to her daughter, her beloved daughter, and at the end she was published. Her letters are very smart, funny, you learn all the gossip of Versailles, and she wrote about uh, chocolate because people didn't know if it was good or not good, you know, it was you could buy only in a, a pharmacy because, yes, they didn't know uh, if it's uh, good for health. For example, I don't know if you know the chocolate shop uh, De Beauve et Galet. De Beauve et Galet, you have Saint Germain des Prés. It's a very prestigious chocolate dealer. And there were Marie Antoinette chocolate dealer, 18th century. Because, uh, I don't know if it's De Beauve or Galet, or De Beauve or Galet was the pharmacian of Marie Antoinette. She was giving a, a pill when she had a headache and it was bitter. So can you put something around? So he was put, he put chocolate and from pharmacy he became chocolate dealer of the queen and he opened the shop. I don't know if it's true. Uh, this is what they say in the <laughs> shop. <but laughs> I have to be honest. But I think more or less, but just the meaning that from a, a, um, medi uh, a medicament, that I forgot the word in English. Medicine. Medica yes, medi uh, medic medicine. medicine, it became, you know what we know. Alors, Madame de Sévigné, she was living in the Musée Carnavalet, mm. <laughs> that you can see a uh, desk, you can see a portrait, you can see the um, a daughter, really, she really mastered the art of conversation. And of course, Café Balzac. Balzac, huh? probably coffee killed him, huh? he was drinking <laughs> a lot of coffee because he was writing during the night. Uh, I was very moved to see the coffee, um, coffee pot au Musée Balzac, if you want to see. It's very interesting. Mm. Two movies I recommend you. Uh, Illusion Perdue. Mm -hmm. Illusion Perdue is uh, ex ex extraordinary. Just to tell that Balzac is so modern that they did last year two movies based on his book, Eugénie Grandin and Illusion Perdue. Mm. You know, that Balzac is so modern that uh, he wrote about everything. And he, f he was a feminist, hein, Balzac, hein? very feminist. So coffee, yes, he was writing in the night and he was uh, drinking probably too much coffee that he <laughs> just killed him, probably, but he was a great writer that inspired all the modern writers, hein, Balzac. Voilà, the next one, please, merci. And Proust, of course, when you think Tea, you think, La Madeleine, the tea, mm -hmm. and Proust. This is a picture of Angelina, you know it's a book of Proust. Alors, uh, this, this now I'm going to write you an extract of my book. I need my glass. <laughs> this. You saw, I mean, purpose. you see how I'm refined? <laughs> you see how, it normally I never use it, huh? just to impress oh, you. No. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I'm refined, you know, just to tell you that I know, you know, it's a, Monet, voilà. Alors, I'm going to read Marcel Proust, so now you know. So, you know the story of Tien Madeleine? Or maybe you don't, so I'm going to tell you. Alors, I hope I'm on the, the right page. Voilà. Uh, it's a, I talk, when I talk about the perfume, and I say how perfume is important, it's well known that a specific smell or taste has the power to recall an event from your past. It's called the reminiscence effect. You recognize a smell and suddenly you floated with a memory. The perfume of your adored, sorry my English, mother, I cannot even read my own book, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, or a fond childhood memory. For example, Marcel Proust, the greatest French writer from 20th century, wrote about this phenomenon. It's the most famous episode from his novel in seven parts, In Search of the Lost Time. To sum up, Marcel Proust, who lived in Paris, caught a cold. He felt miserable, so to cheer himself up, he had a tea with Madeleine, a delicate miniature sponge cake. The moment, the moment he dipped his cake into the tea and bam, he was happy again. <laughs> but why, he wondered. What changed his mood so quickly? Suddenly he realized it was the taste of the Madeleine dipped in tea. This specific taste reminded him of his happy childhood in the countryside. 
His aunt, Leonie, always gave him a madeleine dipped in a herbal tea. All the memories of his carefree youth appeared in his cup of tea. From a madeleine dipped in his tea, Marcel Proust invented neuroscience. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, for example, everybody in French, it's an expression, la madeleine de Proust. Instead of telling what is your uh, comfort food, you say in English comfort food, we say Madeleine de Proust. It means what is the food which reminds you a good memory of your childhood. For example, we all have, for example, my ex-husband is the, the cheese, the pasta with cheese. It's very- Mac and cheese? Mac and cheese. <laughs> it's uh, really, I say, they say, take a last. I say, it's awful. How can you? He say, it reminds me of my childhood in Montreal with Bobby, my m grandmother, that Mordechai Richler talked about it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> he criticized him, uh, so they don't like him in the family. So you see, that's uh, <laughs> no. So, so you see, everybody has uh, me, it's um, the for me it's a cheesecake, the, the, the real, the Jewish cheesecake that my grandmother was baking for me, you know? Uh, so it's something, uh, everybody has a Madeleine de Proust, Madeleine de Proust, it's very literary <laughs> and uh, not comfortable. Madeleine de Proust, voilà. And what is yours? What is your Madeleine de Proust? Adrienne? Crawfish. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It reminds me. My you favorite what? food. Not favorite. No, I know, but it's still, yeah. It has to remind you. Uh, what is yours? <coughs> You see, it's, it's a molasses. French, French, French uh, you Canadian. see. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> voilà, so it's interesting, la Madeleine de Proust. Voilà, you learned a new expression to be a bit snub. <laughs> <laughs> next one, please, ah. next one, please. Uh -huh. voilà. Ah, voilà, alors, et c'est le mot sien. And uh, Café about women, ah, but this, this is the, my book in French. I make a bit publicity. That, that's an interesting it's story. It's a great book. Thank you. Wonderful. It's a great, it's a wonderful book. And it's, and e even though my French is bad, I read it and laughed through the whole thing. Loved it. Yeah, great book. Uh -huh. Thank it's you, great. Yael. Yeah, it's, I wanted, it's about five women from the past. And it's a kind of a life coach through history. That's using inspirational character from history that it can help you to, oh, uh, this is the book to leave, you know, so I chose five. Signed copies yeah. will be available. And it's Sarah <laughs> Bernhardt, and I took five, you know, and each one, I wanted to know how did they succeed in life. I wanted to know, and I try to apply. So when it's not me, the first part is I explain their life, and after I say, okay, how they I apply their tool. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's not me, but I thought very modern, because I think they have many things to teach us. Huh? So voilà, so that's allowed. Maybe I can tell you how I published my book. That's the problem of the writers. You write a book and you want to publish and you want an editor. So uh, I tell you it's crazy that something very important, always to be friend with your dentist. <laughs> <laughs> very important. <laughs> a good point because the day I was dumped, by text message, great. Uh, I had a very, very painful uh, teeth, uh, you know, and I didn't have money, and my mother-in-law said, go to the Ose. Alors, Ose, it's a Jewish center. It was created uh, during the Second World War to help the Jewish from pogrom. Uh, it was created in St. Petersburg, who wanted to escape. And little by little, during the Second World War, they helped the Jewish kids, you know, during the, in France. And now it's, a uh, they accept everybody, but it was the, the doctors are Jewish and it's social and it's cheap. And you sh <laughs> as a Jewish doctor, they're good. <laughs> so you don't pay too much. So uh, my mother in law said, Go there, they have a good dentist, and you won't pay. You won't pay. So I went and I was really, really suffering. And in the, I was on, you know, you're like this. Was, and I saw books and I talked with the dentist. He was singing a T for two and two. F I had never <laughs> seen a dentist like, he was singing this while he was going. <laughs> 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 so I said, I suffer plus I have to hear him singing this song. <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> was really awful. Plus being dumped by text message it was not my day. And I saw, I tried to, I saw books and said, oh, what is, this? you like literature? He said, this is my books, I wrote books. Oh, really? He said, yes, I mean, he was a Jew from Algeria. And he wrote about uh, um, a Jewish woman from Algeria, historical, many books. And we talk about literature, we became friends. I mean, we, and uh, I told him about my book. I'm writing a book about a great woman. And he said, oh, it sounds interesting, send it to me. I said, no, I'm not a writer. He said, send it to me, who knows? I sent him the first chapter, it was about Madame Montespan. He said, I like it very much. I'm going to tell about my editor. I said, no, I mean, I don't want, I, I just wrote <laughs> one chapter. Anyway, so he called the editor. The editor called me, he said, I want you to sign the contract. You think it's not true? I said, what? Alors, I met the editor in the Select Café, very Parisian, you know, Saint-Germain-des-Prés, très éduqué. <laughs> the father <laughs> was a great editor, very speaking, very, not my, not working class, very different from me, not Jewish. <laughs> and he signed the contract and I said, no, I cannot sign. He said, why? Because you haven't read my book. If you don't like it, it's unfair for you. He said, you're the first one who doesn't want to sign because you think it's unfair for the editor. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I he was angry. I said, I'm a lawyer. You don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? After you will sue me, and uh, I mean, I don't want it. You, you never do this. I mean, it's a big mistake, and I cannot do this. I'm honest. So he, he was angry. He said, I know my job. I know it signed, and I signed, and I had to write the books in six months, doing researches. Anyway, so that was a... That's the good uh, story. <laughs> now let's talk about the bad story. The bad story is the, this one. I want, I say, okay, easy, uh, because in France, you don't have agent. You, I had another editor and I was in a party and I talk about my book and I say, I don't have him because he does nothing. And while we were out of conversation, she said, you know what, I'm an editor, I'm interested. So I signed the second, she came to me, I did nothing. So that's the second. I say, easy, no literary agent in France. You ask to the editor, he say yes, he say no. Mm -hmm. Easy, very, you know, not humble at all. I say it will be easy for the American. I wrote to two literary agents. They said, I don't understand what is your book. It's very <laughs> badly written. Uh, it's a travel log. You should write a blog, don't write a book, bye bye. I mean, really, really mean. You know, I was very shocked, huh? two literary agents. So I was very, I said, okay. So I don't want to dance the belly dancer for a literary agent. I don't care. <laughs> I will write my book. And thanks to Janet, that Janet, that she wrote a book, I have to make publicity. She wrote a great book, Demystifying the French. Thanks to Janet, she said, why don't you self-publish your book? Because I did it. So the poor Janet, I was writing at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> sending text message, I don't know, and she really said, do it, do it. So thanks to Janet, I self-published my book too. And book it's baby. great. Thank you. It's great. So that's the good thing. I mean, if you want to write, forget the literary agent. I think they're useless. I mean, no, I, I'm jealous. <laughs> that's why I said this. I'm jealous. <laughs> no, no, don't forget. It's great to have an editor. And if, we could, if I could find an editor, I would be extremely, extremely happy. By the way, if you know an editor, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, we think we're not a good writer. No, no. So I said, do it. You have not, well, you pay, of course. But really, Book Baby was a great uh, way to, to publish your book, you know. So I think it's a good thing. Voila. And the last, uh, the last, ah, voila. Not the last. I want to talk about American women in Paris, because I think we don't talk enough about them. Le Café de la Mairie, the same name than here, Place Saint-Sulpice, but not here, but in Place Saint-Sulpice, where Henry Miller wrote, where uh, Sartre, Camille used to go, and where a great woman, Juna Barnes, you see how she's good looking, the two pictures? Mm -hmm. yeah. Juna Barnes was a lesbian, a glamorous woman. She wrote uh, Nightwood, Nightwood. To be honest, I have read it, I don't remember. <laughs> It's a bit complicated, <laughs> but the characters of all American women, you know, in the Roaring Twenties, you had, before you had Natalie Clifford Barney, she was a, um, you have to read a, a life, she was a scandalous woman, intellectual writer, artist, lesbian, I mean, she had an affair with Liane de Pougy, who was the top three of the best courtesan in the Belle Epoque, so imagine. Uh, she was with René Vivien, who was a poetess, 
and um, of course the lover I like her very much, it's Roma, Roman Brooks. There was an um, exhibition about the Roaring Twenties female artist in uh, Luxembourg. I was very happy because there were many paintings of Roman Brooks, an American woman, a great, great, great uh, painter. And the picture, Berenice Abbott, of course, that you know that we, there is a square, Berenice Abbott, in Paris. Where in is the it? In the 13th. You see, even on the tram, you have uh, Diane Herbus, the mm -hmm. American photographer. Mm -hmm. You have many stop, metro stop American women uh, in Paris. Uh, we, yes. Voilà, so I had to end, as you most of people, uh, voilà. And uh, so that's the book. Alors, the picture, I bought it. <laughs> Agence Roger Violet. Mm. They told me, you know, it's interesting. I wanted to use a picture from um, internet. I had to pay like 80 euros a Paris. And I said, I'm going, I knew it was from this agency, this picture, because I like these pictures very much. So I sent an email and they say, 100 euros. That's all I had to pay. 100 euros, it's a good, uh, for 500 copies. So I told when I signed, I hope I will come back because it will mean I have <laughs> sold more <Yeah. laughs> books. Voilà, so hopefully I will come back. Voilà, so if you're interested, not to do marketing all the time, I have podcast free. It's an influ influential Parisian woman. I did, so there are the five of my books, and I did about Simone de Beauvoir, Madame de Sévigné, Ninon de L'Enclos, The Courtesan, um, Chanel, and five more. Chanel, Coco Chanel, I did. And I do uh, webinars online with, uh, I like New York, uh, New York Adventure Club. I'm, the, I'm very proud because I'm the only foreigner who does it. It's all about New York, but it's not only about Paris. And then Friday, it's about, it's $10. Only one cafe and half, coffee and half in New York. <laughs> <laughs> my son, he spent six months in New York. He told me, one coffee in, in uh, New York, mommy, it's $6. <laughs> so one coffee and half, nothing. So it's Jewish heroin. That's my Friday I do about Jewish uh, heroin of Paris, which will be my next book. So my next book is Paris Cafe with Lisa Anselmo. I have to talk about Lisa Anselmo and the Jewish heroin of Paris. Voila. Okay, wait. I oh, I go back. I'll go back. All in time? Oh. Voila. How do I get back? What do you want? I want to go back to the uh, the first one. No, the big picture. Yeah. You want to leave? That, that's okay. Like that. It's okay. <coughs> voilà. Do you have any not questions? Quite. It's not quite yet. Any Q and A. What do I have? My book where? Amazon. Amazon. Yes, but also there's a shop. Here. Ah yes, there is. I have to tell you. Yes, there is a shop. It's. I'm very proud. I'm. I'm, I'm always proud. But because I'm honored. It's the only bookshop of Paris dedicated 100% to Paris. C'est le piéton de Paris. It's Rue de l'Hôtel de Ville, 58. She has four books of mine. And everything about Paris you can find. She's very friendly. So you can find there four books. And on Amazon, voilà, and that's it. You can order to your bookshop. In the US, That's yes, fine. this is something. You know what you do, uh, if you don't mind? You go and you, you order the book if you want to buy it. And after when you receive, say, oh, it would be so nice on your showcase, you know, to put my book <laughs> on the showcase. <laughs> it's such a nice book. <laughs> so the, now you can order in the bookshop. Book Baby, you can find in bookshop. Book Baby is a um, store? Self, self publisher. Oh, so but right, you that's can the find Book Baby's books in, and you can order the book to your bookshop. <coughs> voilà, voilà. You don't want to read any excerpts? I don't want to read she what? Did. No, I want to read her excerpts. I read it. She did. No, read La Pre. Tu veux dire La Préface? No, Wait, read, read it. Flirting with Hemingway. Okay, I have to tell you. My son, Ethan, the super bright, uh, the other one is bright. Sciences <laughs> 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 Po, uh, voilà. Uh, he read the chapter Flirting with Hemingway because I like Hemingway very much. And he was laughing, laughing. And I said, why do you laugh? He said, mommy, you're funny. And he put the book, he said, 
So what happened? You won't have an American friend anymore in Paris <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very sarcastic. <laughs> so I apologize. I was n it's not bad, but I make fun. <laughs> so, so you want to read? Yeah, flirting yeah, with yeah. Hemingway. You don't want to read it? I read. Okay. <laughs> not fl Not it's flirting with Hemingway. Flirting with flirting Hemingway. With Hemingway. <laughs> flirting with Hemingway. I need my glove. Hello. Every time. I'm sorry to read that, it's not humble, but it's Every time I ask an American living in Paris, what do you do for a living? He answers, I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> then, when I make polite smoke talk with the American writer about his wonderful life in Paris, I quickly realize that he's not a writer at all. <laughs> he's a tour guide or English teacher in Paris or an accountant for some American film all very honorable professions. But I guess it's more romantic to introduce yourself as a writer than an accountant, especially <laughs> when you want to impress a woman. However, not all women react the same way. Ted, an American expatriate, explained to me that he's very successful with French ladies as soon as he says he's a writer. French women are immediately interest, interested in him and ask many questions which boost his ego. Oh, how fascinating. And what do you write? But when he returns home to California, the American women turn their backs on him because, as he says, for American women, being a writer means being poor. <laughs> <laughs> I go on or it's oh, enough, enough. Lecture. No, keep going. Okay. Okay. Hello. You get time. It's true <laughs> that the French love art and worship artists. For us, art is more important than money. Almost always. <laughs> I have noticed that since Woody Allen's movie Midnight in Paris, there are more and more American writers in Paris. <laughs> if you haven't already seen this popular film, I'll sum it up. An American writer arrives in Paris and is transported back to the 20s where he meets his idol Ernest Hemingway. By the way, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's true. By the way, ask any Parisian if he or she liked Midnight in Paris mm -hmm. and you will get a shrug. Not at all. The movie is full of cliché about Paris. I've met so many Americans who pretend to be writers in Paris that I know call this phenomenon the Hemingway syndrome. <laughs> like his icon Ernest Hemingway, this American writer is looking for inspiration in charming Parisian cafe. He writes his literary masterpiece while sipping in a cafe creme and late into the night as intellectual discussion sipping a cheap but excellent wine in a cheap but good restaurant. <laughs> in France wine is cheaper than a Diet Coke. <laughs> I know this because I prefer to drink Diet Coke. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I <laughs> Turi? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm becoming American. Huh? Really, yeah. I think. If you hang out with us long enough, that could happen. Yes. <laughs> but you know, yes, that's why I introduced Shona. I talk about Shona, but it's true that each time I'm, I'm a. Um, that the French will like to, you know, self-deprecated and no, oh, I'm not good, blah, blah, blah. I, I write Shona and Shona, she says, no, no, go ahead, do it, you can do it. <laughs> you know, very supportive and optimistic. Uh, the questions up top. William has a question. Actually, something of a comment. Um, I just wanted to say that, that you talked about I did a lecture for them. Women I did a lecture. Right. And the point I, I want to make is that uh, in a lot of ways, uh, I mean, it's fine to talk about the artists and the actresses and the, you know, the, sort of the celebrities who came here. But if you're talking about the American community in Paris, there's really been the women in the American community in Paris who have made it a community. The men here. Women who have actually done a lot of the, 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 you know, the important work. So Felice Michaud, you know, who 
Weiss. Weiss. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there was someone great with Jim Haynes, huh? Jim, yes. Yeah. There was no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not taking yeah. away from the men who have done mm -hmm. stuff here and there, yeah. but I'm saying that when you're talking about the American community in Paris, I think it's actually the women who have been more important in making it, like I said, a community as opposed to just a, because we are a rather disparate bunch of Americans who live here, but don't really interconnect except generally through women who have gone the extra step to actually organize Thank you very much, William. <laughs> I do agree with him, though, about wi women having played a very large role in the com in the American community. I, I certainly agree with that. Yeah, I mean Weiss Weiss, which was originally the Women's Institute of Continuing Education, was made up of a group of women who were largely um, trailing spouses who, you know, with their husbands came here to work and they, they were not, maybe professionals or not, but they wanted to, to continue their education and they created this organization and then courses and very much a center of the community for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No question? No comment? Are you sleeping? No. We yelled. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Voilà, absolutely. Mm, as a museum, yeah, Marcel Proust. Well, Edith, Edith, thank you so much. You're welcome.